This is a 49 by 49 Rubik's Cube. It weighs 30 kilograms. It's 34 centimeters tall and it has 13,827 pieces. And it's a world record by 16 orders. For those who might be a little lost, let's back up a bit. This is a Rubik's Cube. As you can see, it looks like a stack of small cubes, so we call these cubies. The default Rubik's Cube is referred to as a 3x3 for short. We call it that because it resembles a 3x3x3 three by three by three stack of cubies. Okay, so we get the concepts. This would be a 4x4, four four, a 5x5, five five, a 6x6, six six, a 7 Okay, so as it turns out, it's actually virtually impossible to make a 7x7 seven seven that looks like this. The reason is a little bit complicated, but it essentially boils down to the corner no longer being able to hold on to the other pieces when this center edge piece starts to get too small. So in order to solve this problem, it turns out that the center edge piece needs to stay at about 15% of the cube's height, which in the case of a 7x7 seven seven, looks like this. And then we have the 8x8, eight eight, the 9x9, nine nine, the 10x10, 10 10, and I think you get the picture. This is a 49 by 49, and this is what I made. The precise name of the world record I've actually beaten here is called the highest order n by n by n twisty puzzle. Order just meaning the number of layers and twisty puzzle is just a general name for Rubik's cubes of all kinds. Just as a fun exercise, let's look at some of the previous records in this category. The first recognized world record was the 17 by 17 in 2011. Notice those large outer layers. In 2016, the 22 by 22 was made, and then the 33 by 33 came in 2017, and again, notice those large outer layers. Then, almost seven years later, I completed the 49 by 49, which, of course, also has those, uh... Wait. Okay, so... Going back to our previous depiction, this would be a more accurate model of my actual cube. As you may recall from earlier, only this center edge piece needs to be this wide. But the remaining edges are allowed to be sequentially smaller as you go upward. Which, incidentally, is the definition of this cut line. To put it another way, instead of making all of the edges share the same width as the corner, I chose to make all of the edges share the same height as the corner. Some of you might be curious about why I chose to make it look like this, and the answer is, doesn't it just look nice? The design comes with some slight advantages, but really, it was just a cosmetic choice. I personally preferred this appearance over the previous look. And who knows, maybe it'll catch on. I'd love to see if this becomes a trend in future records. To wrap this up, let's cover some frequently asked questions. How does the cube turn?
slowly. So I'll speed it up for you. In order to get the record, I needed to show that every single piece on the cube worked. And probably the easiest way to prove this is to put the cube into what's called a checkerboard pattern, which is what you're currently watching me do. This process took me 25 hours to turn the cube 90 degrees 288 times. Although the turning is slow, I was being especially careful at the time. I was concerned that if just one piece were to fall out, that that would invalidate the entire proof attempt, so I was being especially careful. How many pieces does it have? 13,827, which was over twice the piece count of the previous record. How big is the cube? 34 centimeters tall. How much does it weigh? 30 kilograms. How long did it take you to create? Roughly five years, but this was mainly because I chose to build the cube while I was studying engineering in college. Altogether, I think that if I had been working on the project as a full-time job, I probably could have gotten it done in just about a year of work. What was the hardest part of the project? Sanding. This step was intense, and it required more dedication than I had given to pretty much anything else in my life up until that point. How many stickers does it have? 14,406 stickers. This is a time lapse of me stickering just one of the six faces. I super glued every sticker, which caused the process to take easily twice as long. But given how small the majority of the stickers were, the super glue was absolutely necessary. How much did it cost? This is a difficult question to answer for a lot of reasons. Partially, because there are multiple correct ways of answering it. I don't personally see any reason to be secretive about it though, so let's break it down. Fair warning, these are all rough estimates. The cost of just the plastic was $1,800. The cost for just the tools was about $2,000, but now for the serious bit, the man hours. This was hard to estimate, but all in all, this project took roughly 3,000 continuous man hours to complete. If I were to value my time at $20 an hour, this would amount to $60,000 for the man hours alone. Adding everything together, we can calculate an approximate value of $63,880. That said, there are still more factors that are harder to quantify that might go into deciding the true price, but I think this is a good enough estimate to satisfy the question. Would you ever try to break the record again? Uh, maybe? I learned a ton from this project, and I know what I'd do differently if I were to do it again. I'm planning to lay out my thoughts on what I'd like to say to the next person that tries this record, but I think I'm going to save that for another video later down the line. So why did you do this? And that's all for our questions! To those who are still here, thank you for watching. Please leave any questions or thoughts you have in the comments. I will read all of them. If there are enough, I might do a follow-up Q&A video. This was the first serious YouTube video I've ever made, and it took me a bit longer to create than I care to admit, so I really hope you enjoyed it. I have plans to make a few more follow-up videos, showing some of the more nitty-gritty details of the process for anyone that might be interested in seeing more. Thanks. Yeah.